Hi everyone, hope you're all well. Welcome back to our channel and in today's video we are going to be comparing some of the most popular and up and coming website builders of 2023. Um, these website builders are the ones that we've, re we've been re reviewing in previous uh, videos and playlists including the 10web AI, Elementor AI, Xyro um, and Framer AI as well. So we'll, we'll go over these uh, pros and cons of all of them and I'll give you my overall thoughts. If you haven't watched the playlist for all of these um, before, um, I would recommend watching them, um, especially if you're interested in these specific website builders and wanting to know if they're um, worth buying a plan for or just were worth um, your time and interest for as well. Um, and at the end we'll also talk about the web development process and how to actually make a decision on which website builder that you want to use as well. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is the ease of use. Um, so essentially how easy it is for to use these website builders. Um, when we were reviewing 10web, um, Elementor, AI, Xyro and Framer AI uh, and hosting our AI as well, um, the whole point of website builders is to make your life easier when uh, designing and developing your website. You shouldn't need, a, there shouldn't be like a steep learning curve. Um, and it should make your life a lot easier to start building your own nice website. So with 10web, we saw that it's a very user-friendly website builder. It had that simple drag and drop editor. It had a variety of pre-made templates and designs that we could use and we could customize it. And it also has a number of features that made it really easy to create and manage a website. Um, we saw that it had the built-in SEO tools, a social media integration, and an e-commerce platform as well to sell products and services online. Let's take a look at how we, the actual getting started process and actually getting the initial build of our website. So as mentioned before, 10web AI is a website builder and it uses AI to generate and customize your website. You can create a professional website without any coding knowledge as everything is built for you. The 10web AI <clears throat> does offer a free trial. It's not completely free. After the trial, you do need to subscribe to a paid plan to continue using the service. If you go onto their website and go into the pricing platform page, you can see some of the pricing platforms um, that they have. They start at uh, $10, $15, $23. That's just for a simple business website. Then they have e-commerce starting at $15 a month. So they offer different features. Um, so for example, the cheapest website uh, plan that you have uh, starts at $10 a month. Um, this is usually a $20 starting price, but for right now they do have um, some annual offers as well. If you were to pay monthly, it's a little bit more, so it makes more sense to sort of buy for annual as you get a bit more cheaper. Um, but you get uh, the drag and drop editor uh, based on Elementor, you have the AI assistant, you have monthly visitors and you have the search engine optimization as well. So you do have quite a lot. Um, but to get started, you, there is a free trial and you don't even need a credit card to get started as well. So we'll start with that. So what you want to do is go into the Tenor web website and you just want to look for the generate your website button. The way the A10 Web AI generator works, you want to click on create a new website with AI. And you just want to answer a few simple questions about your business, the type of website you want to create, and then 10 Web AI will generate a website tailored for you, complete with content, images, and design. You can then customize your website to exact needs and using the drag and drop editor. So um, with getting started, um, you want to basically answer what kind of uh, website you want to create. Is it an informational website or you want to create a website with an online store? We're just going to create a basic informational website and click next. And then you want to select the type of business and you can see they've got a few options here. You can also type in the name of your business as well to kind of help narrow it down a little bit. Um, but you basically just want to select a type of business from here and click next. Now it's asking you to choose your website theme and structure. So you can actually preview this on this section here. Um, you can choose um, the different themes that you have and preview how that's going to look. 
and just essentially look at the different options. So for example, if you choose the ocean theme, there's three ways in this theme is being used. This is, has more of a light mode kind of theme, and this one is using more of the accent color um, theme as well, and the structure is a little bit different. So you just wanna go through and just see which one works best for you. We are gonna go with this one here, and then you just wanna click on next. The next thing you wanna do is write your company name. And now you want to describe your company. This will help uh, input a few keywords on your website and let your AI engine sort of transfer them into a compelling description. What you can actually do is enhance it with AI as well. So if you describe your company, so type in a brief description and then click on enhance with AI to enhance the um, text that you have. So you can see it's created a bit more better text as well. So you can read through that and see if it's okay. You can edit it, add new things, uh, remove things, things like that. Um, so they do have that AI tool to uh, generate your text as well. And we'll look a little bit more about that um, as well. So we're gonna click next. And we are going to type in three main services that we can provide. You just want to input in all of the features that you may have and the services that you want to offer and this will all help the AI build a site that's uh, completely unique to you um, with your content and your services so choose a tone of voice for content either it's informal or formal we will stick with formal and just click finalize so now you need to just create your account um, you can either sign up with Google or sign up just with your website and preview your website. So it's really easy to sign up with your Google or sign up um, just with the account here. And you can see the AI work its magic, creating all of your websites, creating your pages, preparing a layout, and just doing all of these things one by one. So you're not starting off from scratch. You are starting with a base template that we can go in later and customize, but it's all using the AI. It's all using the content that you've just given it and creating a website that's closest to your needs um, and your services as well. So saves a lot of time and also adds that personality as well. And that's it, your website was successfully created with AI. And all we're gonna do now is preview and edit. The Elementor um, AI tool is a little bit different because you start off with the normal AI, Elementor AI builder, but then you can use the AI to uh, enhance your website and create more sections. Um, the Elementor AI was quite easy to use. It was a good option for users who want a bit more flexibility and control over their website than what's offered by other website builders. Um, however, with this one, I think it did require a little bit more basic knowledge of WordPress. Um, if you already have some basic knowledge of your WordPress, you'd still be fine uh, setting up and getting started with Elementor AI, quite easy to use. If not, there is a little bit of a learning curve there, but there's so many tutorials out there as well. So it's not the steepest learning curve to get started, but still quite easy to use. Um, let's see how we get started with Elementor AI. As you know, is a page builder plugin used for WordPress website and it allows you to very easily build out your web pages without the need of coding. So all of the elements and sections are pre-coded for you and you just drag and drop different elements onto your website. So Elementor have a new update coming out called the Elementor, Elementor AI and from judging from what's on the page, the AI is there to help write or improve your website text, translate your website text, create images and generate custom code without ever having to write coding uh, languages yourself. So Elementor already works similarly in this way in that you don't have to code anything in order to build any part of your website. Everything can be drag and drop. Everything is very easily um, accessible. But now they're taking that one step further and allowing you to write and design with AI as well. It's currently not out yet. They are still yet to provide a release date but from the video there's lots of features that they've already hinted at and things like their write with AI so writing in for example the title and then the text boxes will allow you to write with AI and then you can from there choose different 
uh, translations, you can change the tone, you can ask your AI to make, ask your text to make longer and shorter and things like that. So already it's a really useful kind of way to uh, write the content for a website as content writing for a website can take time. If you're not doing it yourself, you then it can be expensive to get content written for you. So if there is AI that allows you to write the content for you within the builder that not only saves time but also probably some costs um, as well as make it a bit more convenient as well. What's also really cool about the AI feature is that you can also code with the AI. So in the custom CSS you can see that your uh, user is just typing in what they want the coding language to do which is to give it a filter and change the border radius on hover and they just typed in what they wanted the CSS to do and then they've and then the AI has written the code itself and uh, pasted it in here. Um, so again, it's a really cool way to kind of use the AI feature as you don't even need to know any kind of coding language. You can just ask the AI to write the code for you and all you need to do is write what you actually want it. So that is really interesting and that's a really kind of fun way to kind of see how the AI can work not only just for text writing but also for code writing as well. So to find out more you can just go into Elementor's website and view this video here. Um, there's still uh, a lot left to kind of be revealed and they have yet to kind of set up a release date. Um, however when this does come out it will be something that can save you lots of time um, and be a bit more effective with your design and your development as well. Um, one thing that you can notice from the video is that um, there's this little upgrade button, meaning that this uh, AI feature might be a paid feature, um, in which case whether or not there's something that would fit your budget or is something that would be worth the price is yet to be determined, but interesting to know that this is something that they're working on um, and definitely something that um, will be fun to experiment with and play around with once it comes out. So next up we reviewed Zyro, another easy to use website builder. Um, we saw that it was quite easy to use and had these pre-made templates that we can customize to our liking um, and had a number of features that made it easy to create and manage our website like the built-in logo maker, the free domain for the first year and the AI assistant that helped um, create content and designing your website as well. So Zyro was also quite easy to use as well. Um, let's see how we got started with Zyro. So what you want to do first is go onto Zyro.com and actually start getting started with an account. So when you're first getting started, Zyro actually has a free plan that allows you to create a website with up to 500 MB of storage, 1 GB bandwidth, um, and you can also use a free plan to access all of the AI tools, including the AI writer, the logo maker, the heat map, and this assistant. There are some limitations. Um, so for example, you won't be able to connect to a custom domain and you can't use the e-commerce features. Um, but if you need a website with more features or storage space, you can upgrade to one of Zyro's paid plans. Um, if you go into uh, the products, you can see their plan starting at $2.99 uh, a month and you'll get a bit more of the features, uh, more AI features, um, more uh, storage space, um, and then on up to 100 websites as well. But in this uh, series today, we are going to just be using the free plan and seeing it and using uh, all the features as much as possible and seeing what we can do with just the free plan. So what we're going to do first is go into Zyro.com and we are going to click on the start now button on the top right. And the first thing that Zyro will ask us to do is to use a template. So we, they have separated the templates into different categories. So if you're um, looking for like a landing page type or if you're a marketing type website, e-commerce, restaurant type website, etc. Um, you can do that as well. Um, what we're going to do and is we want to go through each of these and what you can do is you can click on preview to preview the template and you can preview it in different formats as well. You can preview it um, in, land in mobile or desktop you can go back if you want to preview a different one and you just want to click on the preview and just see where uh, you feel about the template what's really good about the template is that you can use it as a starting point but then change everything that you need about the branding um, the logos things like that the content but at least you're starting off at a blank point as well you can also just go straight in for a blank template and then just add the 
uh, colors and the fonts like that and um, that way you can focus a bit more of turning this website more into your own um, it's up to you how you want to do that or you can do this AI generated one here which is what we're gonna do so we're gonna go in the AI generated one and we're gonna click on start building um, but we are gonna pick one of the blank templates and we are gonna go for a blank business template here and we're gonna click on start building um, so we are gonna click on blank template and we're gonna go for a blank uh, business template for now and if we preview that <clears throat> you can see that it's a fully blank uh, template in that the fonts and the colors are not there but there is a slight layout that we can use um, as a starting off point so we're not starting uh, fully from scratch. So yeah the blank business template they also have service and blog as well but we're going to click on that and we're going to click on start building. And this is our website and this is the Zyro editor. So there's really a lot that we can do once you have your Zyro template set up. Um, we can go in and start editing and also just go in and explore the pages a little bit as well. Um, when it comes to the editor here, it works very similar to if you've ever used the Wix uh, editor where you've got some editing uh, tools here and then there's some editing tools up here as well. So <clears throat> on the left starting here the first tab you have is the add element and the add element tab will allow you to add an, any kind of element for your website things like a button element, uh, image element, things like that. So all of your elements, you can do that and then you can drag and drop those elements to where you want it on the site. Then you have the pages and navigation and this is where you can manage all of the pages um, in your navigation, any pages that are hidden from your navigation, any pages that you would like to add. You can do all of that as well. You Right now you've, we've just got the about gallery and contacts, we'll add to this um, in later videos. Then you have the actual website styles and these are essentially colors and text and buttons and animations that are used across your website and you can change these. What's also really cool is that it allows you to see where those colors are being used but also how many times these are being used as well. So this black color is being used 62 times. Um, so if you change that black color within this website style part, anywhere where this black color is being used, it's gonna change. So if you know you wanna replace this black color with like a uh, more of an action color like a red or a blue you can change it here and it'll change it everywhere where that color is being used it just means then you don't need to go one by one to all of these um, sections here um, you can just change it here globally so this is what's known as global website style settings um, and then there's also local style settings which if you ever wanted to change the button the color or the style of one element for example for just this button then you would style it locally and it would just change in this one uh, button and not everywhere else next up you have the blog so this is where if you had a blog added onto your website you click start a blog and it'll add a blog section onto your website and this is for online store as well so we will come we come back here in another video to set up an online store but we can add products uh, set up easy management of those products um, and optimize these products as well for SEO and these are the AI tools so as I mentioned before we have AI logo maker AI writer and AI heat map again we'll be going through this as well in another video so definitely keep an eye out for that and we also have analytics. So right now there is no analytics set up on our site because our site is not published. But once your site is published, then Zyro will go over some of the analytics that they'll have, which is really useful as well. Same with Framer AI. Getting started with Framer AI was quite easy. Um, it had that drag and drop editor, similar to how the other build just had the library of pre-made components and a number of features that make it really easy to design and develop our website. Um, so I would say it's a good option mainly for designers who want to create and prototype a website without having to code. Um, overall, I think all four of these website builders are relatively easy to use, but 10 Web AI and Zyro particularly are the most user-friendly options, I feel. Um, while Elementary AI and AI, Framer AI, I think, uh, require some basic knowledge of WordPress and design respectively. 
Um, the best website builder for you will depend on your specific needs and requirement. If you are looking for a beginner, if you are a beginner looking for an easy to use platform with a wide range of features, Tenweb, AI, or Zyro or Hostinger are good choices. If you are a designer looking for a tool to create and prototype websites and apps without having to code, then Framer AI is a good option. Um, if you already have a basic understanding of WordPress though, you've used WordPress websites um, and you want that ease of use and creative control over your website design, then Elementary AI would be a better choice. So in terms of ease of use, um, yeah, Tenweb, AI, Zyro and Hostinger, but if you do have that basic WordPress knowledge, Elementary AI as well falls right in there as the most easy to use. So now let's talk about design uh, flexibility. Um, as you all know, with website builders, because it's not a custom design, you are working with some kind of template and not all website builders will give you full control or as much control as other builders uh, will do when it comes to customizing your design. Um, so you have to think about how much design flexibility that you want. If you're happy with a, a site that's kind of close to its template or if you need a lot of control over the site design as well. So with 10 Web AI, it is made using pre-made templates and designs. But you can customize it to our liking. You can also add your own CSS JavaScript as well to further customize your website. Um, and they also have mobile friendly design as well. So let's see how we can customize our 10 Web website. And now we have our website here. So you can see with the website, it's got our services content here. Um, it's got our copy and it's got this layout that we've chosen. Um, it obviously needs a little bit of work. We can need to add our logo. We need to add our content as well. But from a base perspective, it's a really well designed modern layout of our website. To kind of show you a little bit about how the editor works at the bottom here, You've obviously got the um, made by 10 web and this will take you to the website as well for 10 web and bottom here as well. You've got the responsive icons. So you've got, you can view the website on desktop and mobile so you can see exactly how it is on mobile as well, which is really good as more and more people nowadays are coming onto websites on mobile. So it's really important that you make your website, every single part of your website functional on mobile as well. Then you've got these three icons here. So this one will give you an uh, option to try the AI Builder uh, uh, Pro free for seven days. This will allow you to use um, the drag and drop editor and the AI Builder and all of that as well. Then you have uh, quick customizations. So this is basically choosing the font and color brand. We uh, stuck with Forest in the beginning, but if you did want to go in and change some of the colors as well and font, you can do that. It just makes the really quick customizations quite easily. And then you have, um, uh, and then you have the actual web builder. So you can see we've got the web builder and we've got the basic kind of structure. As you can see, so you may from, uh, recognize some of these settings here. The 10 web editor actually uses Elementor. Uh, and Elementor is a really popular WordPress page builder plugin that allows users to create and customize their website using a drag and drop interface. 10 web editor is built on top of Elementor, which means that it offers all of the features and functionality of Elementor, plus some additional features and integrations. So for example, 10 web editor, includes the AI assistant that we're going to talk about in a bit.
So if you're familiar with the Elementor layout, you will find 10 Web Editor very easy to use. Interface is very similar, and all of the Elementor widgets and, and elements are available in the 10 Web Editor. But if you're not even even if you're not familiar with Elementor, you can still learn to use the 10 Web Editor really quickly and easily. It's very straightforward. It's split into basic widgets. You have your text. Um, you have text editors, headers, you have images, um, all of which can be edited. They all look like this. And then you've got the more general ones um, like toggles, social icons, and things like that. So now let's talk about the AI uh, generator as well. So um, we've already generated our whole website with the AI generator, but now what we, can, what we can also do is generate some text. So for example, if we hover over this section here, you can see there's a regenerate section there um, for all the text. And what that means is basically you can uh, regenerate some of the text that's come up. So for example, if we click on regenerate here, we can change the tone of the language. We can decide if we want the tone to be for formal, friendly, uh, if you want to make it longer, make it shorter, simplify the language, um, etc. So for example, let's change the tone of it to be a bit more uh, playful. And all the other uh, AI generators work similar to the Elementor ones. So let's take a look at the Elementor AI generators. Next up is Elementor, and Elementor, as you know, has this wide range of design options, including a drag and drop editor, the library of pre-made widgets, um, as well, and as well as 10 Web AI, Elementor will also allow you to add your own CSS and JavaScript to further customize your website. Elementor AI is slightly more flexible, I would say, than 10 Web AI um, because it also has that website builder plugin, so the main Elementor plugin, and then the AI will help you sort of uh, expand on that as well. Um, there's lots of SEO features, a social media integration as well. You can really customize the exact theme and the exact look. Um, of your website and you can also may take advantage of the pre-made layouts as well. Um, so let's take a look at editing our website using some of the AI tools with Elementor AI. So as mentioned before, the Elementor Code Generator is a feature of Elementor AI that allows you to generate custom CSS and code uh, for your website. And this can be useful for adding custom styles to your website or for implementing custom features. So what we're going to do is to get started with adding some code to our website. What you want to do first is go on to the element where you want to add the codes. For example, in this element here, this heading, we want to add a text shadow. So what we're going to do is we're going to click onto the, the um, helmet here. We're going to go into advanced and we're going to go down to custom CSS. And then you can see under custom CSS, there's this little um, icon here that allows you to edit with AI. If you click on edit with AI, it opens up the AI editor. They, and what's really cool is that they have a bunch of prompts that you can use. Now, Elementor prompts are just instructions that you give to your Elementor AI to help it generate the desired output. Prompts can be simple or complex, and they can be used to generate text, code, images, and other types of content. When you're writing prompts for Elementor, it's really important to be specific as possible. The more specific you are, the better the AI will be able to understand what you want. So here are some good tips for writing Elementor prompts. You want to be specific. Tell the AI exactly what you want it to generate. You want to use clear and concise languages, avoid jargon or technical terms that the AI may not understand. You want to provide examples. If you want the AI to generate a certain type of content, provide examples of that content and be creative. Experiment with different prompts to see what the AI can generate. So in this one, for example, we want the AI to add a 3D shadow to the text. 3D shadow to text. And let's click generate code. Okay, so it's given us a uh, text here, the code, and we want to click on insert to insert that. And you can see we've got the shadow added here. Just to show you again, if we take out the text, we've got normal text and then we add the text again. And with the text there, we can see it's added here. Um, so it's really cool. Um, we can also add, and it's just that simple. We've managed to add a CSS code um, just by typing in 
what we want it to do and then the elementary AI has written that code for us. It's quite simple changes um, but the, the implications of it and the potential of it is really um, and really um, cool as well. Um, let's do a code for here, the button, maybe you want to add a drop shadow. So if we click on the button here, we're going to click on custom CSS, we're going to click on edit with AI, and we are going to um, add a shadow to the button. And we have our uh, code here and click on insert and you can see we've got the drop shadow as well added um, to our button as well. So it's really cool what you can do with the selector um, and what you can do with the um, code generator as well. As mentioned before, the code generator does come with pre-written prompts if we click on edit with AI. You can see some suggested prompts here. Um, on hover, animate 20% bigger, rotate 10 degrees, etc. If you click on the little history app icon, you can see a history of all of the code that you have generated. You will need to upgrade to that. As again mentioned, this is still the free version that we're using because we um, are part of Elementor. Um, but if you upgrade, you can get the generation history for the past 90 days, which is really useful. So now let's look at some text generation as well. So if we click on, for example, this text here, and if we click on title, so you can see under title is another uh, section to edit with AI. And we can basically just ask the AI to write some text for us. For example, generate a headline for a blog post about the benefits of using elementary AI. And you can use the text enhancer and the prompt to essentially change the tone, um, simplify it, make it longer, shorter, things like that. Um, and then what you want to do is and click generate text. And this is what they've come up with. So revolutionize your web design process with Elementary AI, discover to streamline your workflow. And then after that, you can decide if you want to change the tone, if you want to make it longer, make it shorter. or you can translate it to different languages. So it's really cool how you can use the um, text editor as well um, and use the prompt enhancer that way. And if you want to click on use text and you can use the text as well. So now let's take a look at the uh, image editor and the background editor as well. The Elementor Image Generator AI is a feature of Elementor AI that allows users to generate custom images for your website using the artificial intelligence. And you can also use it to edit the images as well, like removing the background. Um, so what you want to do is click on an image or even add a new image. So we'll just add a new section. And we'll just add on an image here. And what we're going to do, we're going to choose the image first. So you can upload an image that you already have. Um, and we're going to just choose this one here. And we're going to do two things. So for example, if we click on the create with AI, you can use the image that you currently have and do a lot of different um, edits as well. So you can either generate with the you generate an image with the prompt, or you can use an image that you already have and just do some um, examples. For example, if you do the remove background, you just want to click on the remove background and then just click into that button here, and watch Elementor just do everything for you. You just need to click on the button. So you can see you've got the image removed as well. If you click on use image. And we've got the image simply added over here. Um, when it comes to their image uh, editing tools, Elementor's built-in image editing tools are a suite of powerful features that allow you to edit your images directly within the Elementor editor. This means that you can create and edit your images without having to switch to a separate image editing program. 
Um, the tools include, we've seen the remove background, we can also replace background, um, expand the image, resize it um, to a larger or smaller, improve it, generate a fill, so make an art, mark it an area and edit with, with a prompt. So for example, if we take this area here, So um, essentially what you can do is fill that area that we've marked with whatever it is that we said um, in, the, in the area as well. Um, which is really cool with the uh, generative fill as well. It is still in beta, so there still is some um, things to work out. Um, Elementor's image editing tools are really easy to use and they're very powerful. They allow you to create and edit professional looking images for your website without having to learn to use a separate editing program. The other thing that you can do is generate an image with a prompt. So for example, when it comes to using prompts for the image generation AI, be as specific as possible in describing the image you want to use. Um, this will help the AI to generate an image that's really relevant to your uh, request. Um, so for example, if we type this, and then you can type what image type, if you want it to be um, a photographic, digital art, things like that, the style that you want it to be in, um, and the aspect ratio as well. So you can see um, these images are here generated by the community. Um, and you can just type in your own um, style here and you just want to click on generate images. So for example, if you, uh, you can use the prompts to generate images that are relevant to your website. Um, if you write, have a website about cooking, you could use the prompt like cartoon illustration of a chef cooking in the kitchen or digital illustration of a cookbook cover, etc. Um, so yeah, you can see we've got our images and they're pretty good images as well. So you want to make sure you're as, as specific as possible. Um, and then just insert that however way you want to and that's it. That's your image done. Um, so it's really useful to create stock images and what's really good is that they're your images. They're free to use on your website. Um, so yeah, it's really easy to add that as well. So here's some additional tips for writing good prompts for Elementor Image Generator. Use clear and concise languages, avoid jargon or technical terms, provide examples. If you want the AI to generate a certain type of image, provide examples of that image and be creative. Experiment with different prompts to see what the AI can actually generate. With a little practice, you can learn to write prompts that will help Elementor Image Generator to generate the images that you need um, for your website or business. Next up, we have Zyro, um, and then Zyro also use the pre-made templates and designs, but they also let you use CSS and JavaScript code as well. You can add your own CSS and JavaScript to further customize your website. Um, so there is some flexibility there, and just like Elementor AI, there's AI-powered design features such as Logo Maker and Color Palette Generator to really enhance your branding on your own custom website as well. So let's take a look at some of the AI tools that Zyro have to offer. So you can see a list of all of the templates that they have here. They've got templates in different categories. So you can have templates for businesses. Um, they offer a variety of templates for businesses of all sizes. These templates include features like contact forms, product galleries, team pages. There's also uh, portfolio templates as well. Um, and they will offer uh, templates for professionals and freelancers, um, creative professionals and freelancers. Um, and these basically will include image galleries, video galleries, and project descriptions as well. There's also quite a few uh, e-commerce ad templates as well. So Zyro also offers a variety of e-commerce templates for businesses that can sell products or, or services online. These templates include features such as product uh, catalogs, shopping carts, and checkout pages. So no matter what type of website you need to create, you're, uh, you'll be able to find a good suitable one for as uh, with using a Zyro template. As mentioned before, all of these Zyro templates are customizable. So you can click into each of them. So for example, let's go for this one here. If we click on start building, it will open up the website really quickly um, using uh, sort of placeholder content as well. But then we can go in quite easily and go into website styles and change the colors, the text fonts, the buttons, animations that are currently being used. So as mentioned before, Zyro 
colors you can customize globally and locally. So with the global style settings, um, if you expand this letter here, um, you'll find all the colors that are used across your website and the most frequently will used will appear at the top. And what you want to do is just click on change to change the color um, of the of the of that specific color right now. You can use a color picker to really um, understand which color you're going for or if you already have the hex code you can just type in that hex code as well. So for example if you wanted to change it to this color and click on accept. You can see that originally where that uh, black color is being used it's now changed to this coral color and that is what's meant by global style settings. Um, it just means that instead of um, changing each of these elements one by one, these elements are changed all at once and saving you a lot of time and hassle as well. You can still edit the appearance of individual elements and sections manually. So this is essentially known as local style settings. So for example, if this button here, right now that's following the global style settings of uh, the sort of the darker background and the white text. So if you wanted to make this button different compared to the other buttons, what you want to do is click on the preferred elements, this button here, and then you want to click on edit button and you just want to go into the style tab and just change the styling to exactly how you want it. So for example, this border color, we're going to change it to pink and this fill color, we're going to change it to pink as well. Um, and maybe we'll change the text color to that blue instead and maybe um, change the size just to make that a bit bigger. And yeah, so we've got a completely different color as well. Um, and we've got a completely different button. You'll notice none of the other buttons have changed. It's just that one button that we've edited locally um, to make this button stand out a bit. So it's up to you how you want to do the colors. What I recommend is when you first start off with a template, whether it's a blank template or one of these templates here, is to edit everything uh, globally. So edit your colors globally. Uh, make sure the fonts are edited globally as well. So for example, if you wanted to use a different font styling, um, and then edit the buttons to however you need to. Um, and then you can go in individually as you are building the site and changing some elements locally if needed. Um, when it comes to editing colors um, and fonts, there are some best practices that you want to consider. So for example, with colors, you want to use a limited color palette. It's best to use a limited color palette of maybe like two or four colors for your website. This can kind of helps create a cohesive and professional look. You want to use complementary colors. So when choosing colors for your website, it's really important to consider how they complement each other. Complementary colors are opposite uh, each other on the color wheels. So for example, blue and orange are complete are complementary colors um, and things like that. You also want to use high contrast colors, especially for your sections. So what that means is just it's just making sure the text is easier to read. So essentially using a dark background um, and then uh, a lighter text so you can see the text over it. Or if you have light background here like this, some darker text um, to go over it so that you can read the text as well. Um, and don't use too many colors on your website. It can be really overwhelming and distracting. So that's why I stick with the limited color palette and use accent colors really sparingly. When it comes to fonts, uh, again, use a limited number of fonts. Um, it's best to use a limited number of fonts for your website because it creates a cohesive and professional look as well. And you want to use fonts that are easy to read. Um, avoid using fonts that are too small or that they're too decorative as well. Um, the font options uh, in Xyro, they're all pretty good in terms of accessibility. So uh, choosing some of their um, text pairings as well um, would be fine. But yeah, with the fonts, you want to make sure that they are easy to read and that they're consistent with your branding. Um, this will help create a unified look and feel for your brand as well. Um, colors and fonts are used to create this visual hi hierarchy. Um, essentially helping you guide your user throughout your website to the most important information on the page. So for example, you can use uh, a d colors and larger fonts to highlight important information or section on the website. Um, so this uh, section here, it's on a dark background and the text is a lot larger. This part is highlighted a lot. Uh, so to highlight this important information of free shipping of over $50. Um, so you can use larger font size for your headings and a smaller font size for your body text. And you can also use bold or italicized fonts to highlight important information as well. 
Um, different colors and fonts can evoke different emotions in people. So for example, the color red is often associated with excitement, urgency, while the color blue is often associated with trust and reliability. So you can use colors and fonts to evoke the desired emotions in your visitors. So definitely something to think about. The colors and fonts you choose for your website can help create a unique brand identity and this will help you stand out from your competitors and be remembered by your users as well. So this kind of best practice is really good to follow um, and you can create a website that's visually appealing, easy to use and consistent, consistent with your branding as well. As mentioned before, all of the templates are mobile responsive. So if I switch to mobile here, you can see that everything kind of stacks nicely. Everything is still an appropriate font um, as well. So uh, you don't have to worry so much, but it's also really important as you are adding new sections and building new sections onto your site you, that you are checking on mobile so that if there is anything that's been missed, you can easily change it as well. And lastly, Flamer AI. So just like the others, there is also a drag and drop builder to help build out sections exactly how you want it and they also have the pre-made designs as well. Um, they offer a really high degree of flex design flexibility that to allow you to create custom designs um, and they also have lots of collaboration features and prototyping features and design system features that the other platforms don't really offer. So the best website builder for design flexibility is the one that offers the features you need to create the website if you want. If you need a wide range of design options and customization features, the Elementor AI or Framer AI are good choices. If you're looking for a more user-friendly option, um, 10 Web AI or Xyro are good choices. You might be a little bit more limited to what you can do. So another thing that we're going to compare is scalability and growth. You want to make sure that you, the platform that you choose can grow with you. Um, it might be the platform that you choose might be really good on a small scale if you're just starting out, but you want to make sure that it can also grow with you as well. If you get more foot traffic or if you want to get more online traffic, if you get more um, products or if you want to add features to your website, you want to make sure that your platform can offer that and can facilitate for that as well. Um, so let's talk about 10Web AI, scalability and growth. So 10Web AI can support websites of all sizes, from small personal blogs to large business website. It does have like e-commerce functionalities, so it's something that you can add. It offers a variety of features that make it really easy to scale your website, such as e-commerce support. They have unlimited bandwidth and a variety of hosting options as well. Um, they also have social media integrations and SEO tools, so 10Web AI can be a good platform to help start off your website but also grow with you as well as your website grows. So with the Elementor AI this is really focusing on Elementor and also WordPress in general. Um, this is a really good choice for businesses of all sizes as it can be used to create and manage all types of websites from simple blogs to complex e-commerce stores. It's really highly scalable allowing you to easily add new features and functionality to your website as your business grows but again that's Elementor with the WordPress CMS that adds this much of uh, complexity to your website as well. Um, there's loads of advanced design features, unlimited storage, unlimited bandwidth that you can get depending on which hosting platform that you choose. Um, so it's a very highly um, scalable platform to use as well, especially if you have if you're starting off small but you have big plans for the future. Zyro again is a good choice for small businesses and startups because it's quite easy to use and it does have a good amount of features that are affordable price. In terms of scalability, it does allow you to upgrade your plan as your hosting grows. I wouldn't say it's as suitable for large businesses as Elementor would be, um, but uh, you do get unlimited websites with Zyro hosting plan um, with their unlimited storage and their unlimited band uh, bandwidth as well. Um, there is also live chat support so they can talk with you a bit more of your options. Um, I wouldn't say it's as highly scalable as Elementor would be. Um, but still a good platform to choose um, if you do want a little bit of a platform that can grow with you. And then lastly, Framer AI. Um, it's a good choice for small businesses. Um, it is quite scalable because they do offer a wide range of um, features and there's also a wide variety of collaboration features, especially um, with Framer AI, depending on the plan that you choose, you can have unlimited projects custom domains and things like that. However, there is no room for e-commerce in terms of like a functioning e-commerce facility. So if you know e-commerce is something that you want to add to the future, then this, uh, then Framer AI uh, is ruled out, um, would need to be ruled out because um, there's, as of right now, there's no um, space for e-commerce. Um, when it comes to scalability and growth, uh, personally, I think 
it's the one that offers the features that you need support as your business grows. If you need a website builder that can handle high traffic, volumes, and complex functionality, Elementor AI are really good choice. Is a really good choice. Um, if you need a more affordable option, then I would say Zyro or Tenweb AI. At the end of the day, um, when it comes to traffic and performance, it's really about w- what hosting platform that you're on. Um, can the hosting platform that you choose support the platform that you are uh, on as well? So. Um, definitely I think about that as well but yeah Elementor I think would probably be the best one followed by Tenweb, Zyro and then Framer AI in terms of scalability. And lastly let's talk about customer support. You want to make sure no matter what platform you choose you have good customer support even if you do have a good working technical knowledge it's always good to have customer support for the particular platform that you have because you may come across an issue that you've never come across before that you don't find in in forums and having access to customer support easily um, can save a lot of time and headache. So with 10 Web AI, they have they do offer 24/7 live chat, email support, and a knowledge base as well. Um, they also have a really good health center with articles and tutorials, and there's a community forum um, as well. With Elementor AI, again, 24/7 live chat um, support as well. All of all of the platforms we've talked about, Zyro, Hosting, or Framer AI, they all have 24/7 live chat support. They also have email report as well. Um, And that is probably the most convenient way to get help if you have a problem and the knowledge bases as well is helpful finding answers to common questions. Um, Additionally, Elementor AI and Framer AI have a larger community, so they have actually video tutorials and a community forum as well, which can be helpful for learning how to use the platform and getting help uh, from others. Um, All four website builders have really good customer support. I would say Elementor AI and Framer AI are probably the most comprehensive because they also include video tutorials and community forums. Um, Elementor AI also provide priority support for paid users as well. But again, there's um, all of the all all of the platforms, hosting or Zyro, they all offer really good customer support. So I don't think you'll go wrong um, in choosing any one of them in terms of customer support. I'm not really worried about each uh, any of them either. So my overall thoughts on the website builders, um, they're all really good with 10web. 10web AI is a good choice for biggest businesses and small businesses looking for an easy to use website builder with a wide range of features. It offers a variety of pre-made templates, designs, as well as drag and drop editor that make it really easy to create a professional looking website without any coding knowledge. 10web AI also offers a variety of features that make it really easy to make manage websites like the SEO tools, social media integration, and e-commerce. Um, uh, my only cons of uh, Ten Web AI is that <clears throat> the e-commerce platform is not as robust and as not as flexible as some other website builders, especially um, Elementor with WooCommerce uh, added onto the WordPress uh, CMS as well. Um, so definitely, if you're going to be a high-powered e-commerce website, especially, um, I would consider Elementor over Ten Web. Although there is some features there and f- and support there for e-commerce as well. Um, but yeah it has loads of features that make it really easy to manage your website and they have good customer support as well Elementor AI really happy with it it's definitely a good choice for users who want more control over the design and functionality of their website it's definitely a good choice for users who have plans for a slightly more complex website um, where they might need uh, more control over functionality e-commerce support things like that but still has that easy to use drag and drop editor and that library of pre-made widgets and sections as well Um, and the AI tools that they offer are really interesting like the we've seen with the um, image editor and the image creator and the code generator as well Um, because it's WordPress they make it really easy to help manage your website like your blogs and e-commerce out of all of them though, I will say that it has a higher, like a more steeper learning curve because of WordPress, especially if you're new to WordPress, um, it can be a bit daunting to use in the beginning. Uh, for that, I would suggest using a hosting provider that has WordPress support um, or even a WordPress approved hosting provider like uh, Bluehost WP Engine because then you'll get at least professional support with your WordPress website. Um, so out of all of them, I would say Elementor has the most steepest learning curve, but it's probably the most suitable for businesses that have more complex needs. 
Zyro and Hostinger, again, is a good choice for small businesses and startups that are looking for an affordable and easy to use website builder. It does offer a variety of pre-made templates and designs and has that easy to use drag and drop editor. Actually, we've seen it's very, it's, it's the Elementor uh, drag and drop editor that's on top of it. And they also have really good AI tools as well. Um, again, with Zyro, very easy and you have uh, a lot more flexibility over the design, more so than Tenweb. Um, as, but again, uh, making sure that you uh, are able to get to grips with Zyro as well and being able to use it because there's a bit of a learning curve to it. The good thing about Zyro is that it's hosted by Hostinger and Hostinger are very, very, very good customer support. They're a really good hosting platform as well um, and then should be able to help you with any issues that you may have. Um, so this is uh, also a good choice as well. Uh, and lastly, Framer AI. Um, Framer AI, I, I really do like this um, platform. I think it's a really good choice for designers if, to create really quick prototypes, but that are still have a uh, modern approach to design as opposed to traditional or outdated. Um, it has that library of pre-made components, a variety of customization options. I wouldn't say it's the most scalable platform, especially if you are wanting to add e-commerce to it, but it's definitely a really good one that makes it easy to collaborate with others and share your work. Overall, the best website builder for you is the one that depends on your specific needs and your requirements. I think if you are a beginner or you're a small business looking for something that's really easy to use with a wide range of features, Tenweb or Zyro are good options. If you're willing to put in a bit more work and learn a bit more, then so in order to have a bit more control over your website, then Elementor with the WordPress CMS. Again, you'll have probably the most control over your website with that. Um, and then Framer AI, if you're more of a design uh, collaboration needs then as opposed to actual development so they're all really good choices so I think part of um, picking the correct platform for you also depends on what you know of the web development process so understanding the web development process and knowing what goes into web development will help you kind of pick the plan that suits you most because you know what kind of think about so let's dive into the web development process as well so what is the website development roadmap? The website development ro roadmap um, process, it involves several key steps and essentially all of these steps make up the roadmap from conception all the way to launch. So here's a general overview. First up, we have project discovery, and this is the initial phase and it involves understanding the client's goals, target audience and project requirements. Discussions and brainstorming sessions help to clarify the scope, features and overall vision for the website. Then there's the planning. So once the project objectives are clear, the development team outlines the project plan, including timelines, milestones, and resources. They decide on the technology stack, content structure, and design approach. The next phase is the design phase, and in this phase, designers create wireframes and mockups that visualize the website's layout, the interface, and user experience. Feedback and revisions refine the design until it aligns with the client's visions and the agency's capabilities. Next up, you actually have content creation and content development starts including writing, imagery, uh, videos and other multimedia elements. Quality content is essential for engaging users and conveying the intended message. Next up is the development stage and developers will then take the design and turn it into a functional website. And this involves coding, HTML, CSS, JavaScript and any kind of background programming. They will build the interactive elements, the databases and integrate any necessary third party tools. Next is the testing phase. So rigorous testing is crucial to ensure the website works smoothly across various devices, browsers, and screen sizes. Bugs, glitches, and usability issues are identified and resolved during this phase. Then you have a client review. The client review is for the client to actually review the development website and provide any feedback. Any necessary adjustments are made before proceeding. As the website nears completion, preparations for launch begin, and this includes configuring hosting, domain setup, SSL certification, and any other technical requirements. And then you have the actual launch, and this is when the website is made live to the public, and this involves migrating the website to its final hosting environment, ensuring all links and functionalities are working correctly. And lastly, you have post-launch uh, testing and optimization. After launch, ongoing testing continues to catch any issues that might arise once the site is live. Additionally, performance optimization and SEO efforts are undertaken to enhance user experience and visibility in search engines. 
website re um, maintenance and updates and this should be offered sort of by agencies afterwards but essentially websites require regular maintenance inc including security updates content updates and feature enhancements this phase ensures the website remains functional and up to date over time and next up we have analytics and monitoring so continuous monitoring of website traffic and user behavior provides insights into how well the website is performing and where improvements can actually be made so the specifics of each step can vary based on the complexity of the projects and the practice of the development agency. This roadmap provides a sort of general outline of the website development process from start to finish. Um, in the next few slides, we'll go over um, each of these phases in more detail. So first up, we have the project discovery phase. So as mentioned before, the project discovery phase is the critical starting point in the website development process. It's during this phase, the development team, along with the client, will collaborative, collaboratively gather information and define the project's scope, goals, and requirements. The goal of project discovery is to establish a clear understanding of what the client wants to achieve and to lay the foundation for a successful process. So here's a breakdown of what happens during the project discovery phase. We have initial meetings, so the development team meets with the client to initiate discussions about the project and these meetings might invoke um, or involve key stakeholders, designers, developers and project managers. The purpose of the initial meeting is to introduce the team, establish a rapport and create an open line of communication. Next up, the client's goals and objectives for the website are discussed. So this could include the purpose of the website, is it an e-commerce, informational website, portfolio, etc target audience, desired user experience, and any specified outcomes the client wants to achieve. Next up, a brainstorming sessions are then conducted to explore different ideas, concepts, and approaches for the website. And this might involve discussing design aesthetics, branding, visual elements, and potential features. The scope of the project is defined, which includes specific features, functionalities, and pages that the website will include. The team and client collaborate to identify what's feasible within the given timeline and budget. Next up is a requirements document, and in this section, all of the gathered information, discussions, and decisions are documented in a requirements document. And this document serves as a reference point for the rest of the development process and helps prevent misunderstandings. And lastly, client agreement. So based on the information gathered during the discovery phase, the development team and the client may formalize the agreement through a contract or pro project proposal. This document will outline the scope, timeline, budget, and all the other relevant terms. The project discovery phase lays the groundwork for the entire development process. It ensures the development team and the client share a common understanding of the project's goals, requirements, and constraints, which in turn helps streamline the subsequent stages of design, development, and implementation. So next up is the planning phase, and the planning phase in website development is a crucial step that follows the project discovery phase. And during this phase, the information gathered from the project discovery phase is used to create a detailed roadmap for the project. And the planning phase sets the stage for a successful execution of the website development process by defining the project scope, objectives, resources, timelines, and milestones. So here's a deeper look at what happens during the planning phase. First up is scope refinement, and the project scope, as outlined during the project, project discovery phase is refined further to ensure clarity. Any ambiguities or gaps in the scope are addressed to avoid misunderstandings later in the project. Based on the project's requirements, the development team selects the appropriate technology stack, and this includes decisions about the programming languages, frameworks, CMS, and any third-party tools or plugins that will be used. The high-level design um, and architecture of the website is designed. This includes decisions about how different components of the website will interact, uh, the data flow and the overall system structure. Designers will then create wireframes and prototypes that outline the basic layout and user interface of the website. These visual representations provide a glimpse of how different elements will be arranged on the pages. A detailed project timeline is created, breaking down the development process into phases, tasks, and milestones. And this timeline will help provide a clear roadmap for the entire project and helps manage expectations as well. The team then identifies the roles and responsibility of each team member, including designer, developer, content creators, and project managers. This ensures that everyone knows their role in the project and contributes effectively. 
The budget for the project is refined on the scope, resources and timeline, and the cli client is provided then with a detailed cost estimation that includes development, design, testing and any other rel related expenses. And lastly, we have the project management tool setups. So the tools and platform. This includes task tracking systems, version control, repositories and communication channels. The planning phase lays out a clear roadmap for the development process, setting expectations for both the development team and the client. It helps minimize scope creep, reduces the likelihood of misunderstandings and provides a structured approach to executing the actual project. A well-executed planning phase contributes significantly to the overall success of the website development project. So let's talk about the design phase. And the design phase starts off with mockups and prototypes. So designers will create detailed mockups or interactive prototypes of key pages or templates. These mockups provide a clear representation of how the final website will look and function, helping stakeholders visualize the end project. With increasing use of various devices and screen sizes, responsive design is crucial. Designers ensure that the website's layout and elements adapt seamlessly to different screen resolutions from desktop monitors to mobile phones. Designers will then ensure that the website is accessible to users with disabilities by following accessibility guidelines and incorporating features like alt text for images, proper heading structures and keyboard navigation. Designers will work close, closely with content creators to ensure that content is seamlessly integrated into the design. This includes placing text, images, videos, and other multimedia elements in a visually appealing manner. Design iterations based on client feedback are a natural part of the process. Designers will make necessary re revisions to ensure that the final design meets the client's preferences and objectives. And then once the design has been refined and aligns with the client's expectation, the client gives final approval for the design before moving on to the development phase. The design phase brings the vi project's visual elements to life and shapes the user experience that visitors will have on the website. Effectively, collaboration between designers, developers and clients is really crucial to ensure that the design captures the essence of the project's goals and engages users effectively. So the next phase is the development phase and during this phase the website design is transformed into the functional interactive website. Developers will write code, integrate databases and build the necessary functionalities and this phase involves front end development. So they will create the user interface by coding with HTML, CSS and JavaScript. They will also ensure that the design is faithfully implemented and that the website is visually appealing and responsive. Back end development, development will work on the service side of the website and they build databases, handle data processing and develop server logic to make, the, make sure the website's functionality works smoothly. And developers also implement interactive features, forms, search functionalities, user accounts and any custom functionalities specific to the project in this phase here. After the development is complete, we moved on to the client review phase and this client this is the phase where the client is presented with the working website for the first time for review. This phase involves client feedback again. So the client reviews the website again to ensure that it aligns with their vision and requirements. Any necessary changes or improvements are communicated to the team. And then based on client feedback, developers make necessary revisions to the website to address any concerns or requested changes. Once all of the changes have been confirmed, it moves on to the testing phase. So this is just before the website goes live. Rigorous testing is conducted to identify and resolve any bugs, errors, or usability issues. This phase includes functional testing. So ensuring that all functionalities, features, and links work as intended. Compatibi compatibility testing. So testing the website on various browsers, devices, and operating systems to ensure consistent performance. And performance testing. So assessing the website's loading speed, response times, and overall performance. Once the testing phase is complete, it's moved on to the launch phase. And this is when the website is actually ready to go live and client satisfied with everything. And this phase involves final prep. So in configuring hosting, domain settings, and ensuring all necessary files and database are ready for deployment. Moving the website from the development environment to the live server, and then launch announcement. So announcing the website's launch to the public or target audience. After the successful launch phase, then comes the post-launch testing and optimization. So after the website is live, ongoing testing and optimizations are necessary for continued success. 
This mainly involves bug monitoring, so continuously monitoring the website for any post-launch bugs or issues and addressing them promptly. And performance optimization, so optimizing the website speed, responsiveness, and user experience based on the real-world usage data. Next up is maintenance and updates, and this is basically ensuring that websites afterwards require regular maintenance and updates to remain functional, secure, and up-to-date. Um, and this involves security updates, so applying patches and updates to prevent security vulnerabilities, content updates, so keeping the content fresh and re relevant by adding new information, articles, products, and any feature enhancements, int so introducing new features or improving existing ones based on user feedback and industry trends. So monitoring and analyzing the website's performance and user behavior provide valuable insights for continuous improvement and this is this can be conducted during the analytics and monitoring phase. So things like traffic analysis using tools like Google Analytics to track website traffic, user demographics and popular pages, conversion tracking, so monitoring user user actions such as form submissions, purchases or downloads to measure the website's effectiveness, and then studying how users navigate the websites and identifying areas where users might face difficulties. So collectively, all of these phases ensure a comprehensive and successful website development process from the initial design concept to the ongoing maintenance and optimization of the live website. And that's a wrap comparing those popular uh, website builders. If you haven't watched our playlist on each of those website builders, please watch them and give it a go, especially if you decide to use one of them. Um, they'll be able to help you out getting started uh, all the way from getting started to launching your website. So um, yeah. Overall, I think these platforms are great. They're really innovative and um, it's really important that you test a few out before you just decide on a platform um, and then get to grips with the platform itself. So definitely check out our videos. Um, if you like this video, please uh, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below. Or if you have any other platforms that you want us to check out, please let us know. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.